Hello, my name's Lizzie. I'm Anglican. In three and a half months' time, I'm going to be moving into a convent ready to become a postulant. And a few weeks ago now, I made a video called Praying at Set Times of Day. And it was quite a long video because I, I did sort of three 10 minute chunks. That the first part of it was about the different little services throughout the day that you'd find at a convent or a monastery. And then the the second section was about how um, I've been using morning and evening prayer as a, like not a nun obviously, um, over a number of years. Um, and so showing how, how it's possible to pray a bit like a nun when you're not one in a kind of more simplified, um, abbreviated way maybe. And so that would just be like praying morning and evening prayer rather than the the several services that they might have throughout their day and then the last section of that video was me um just sharing some thoughts on on how i have found praying in that way over the 13 years that i've been using this kind of form of more formal prayer at set times of day but for your because that was quite a long video um and i think people are probably more interested in the first bit about the the, the different services throughout the day that monks and nuns have and the different names for them. Um, this is just me um, sort of republishing just that first like 10 minute chunk or however long it was um, as its own little video. So I'm sorry for the abrupt start and the abrupt end. I just had to trim it as best I could from, from the, the, its sort of longer original video. So um, here is just a, a shorter video just on things like prime, matins, terse, sex, known, vespers, compline, um, yeah, and like I always say, I'm not an expert, but this is just what I've picked up um, over the years of, of going to convents and reading about these things and praying in quite similar ways at home, and yeah, I hope it's helpful to you. I will hold your peace. might notice if you look at if you go to a convent or if you look at the the prayer timetable that each community will have is that the Eucharist is central to their daily life I, I've never come across a community uh, of all the ones that I've I've read the websites about or or visited myself that that doesn't have a daily Eucharist or communion service um, and quite often the Eucharist tends to be around breakfast time, like maybe just before breakfast, or sometimes it's just before lunch to make it easier for people from outside the convent to come and join the sisters, maybe even just to make it easier for uh, a priest to come in and take the service. So yeah, daily Eucharist is a big part of, of how nuns pray. And then uh, of course, there's going to be times where the nuns have got time for their own like personal prayer, private prayer, whatever phrase you want to use, where they're not using set words together, but they might just be able to be on their own in their own room or sit on their own in chapel in silence. Uh, and that's that the nuns will have time to just talk to God using their own words from the bottom of their heart or um, pray in silence or they might especially in the early early morning I think that's usually a time when nuns will have some some space before the day gets going to have like a, an hour or so or half an hour of, of quiet prayer just on their own in their rooms and I think it's quite common that they might use that time to do something called Lectio Divina where you they might sit with the um, the gospel passage that's going to be read in the Eucharist service later on. Um, but I won't explain Lectio Divina in this video. There are loads of really good YouTube videos about Lectio Divina, so go watch them because they're really good. Um, but so nuns will have time in their day, like quite often early morning, and I guess if they wanted to before bed as well, when they've got time just for their own, um, their own prayer in their own words, quite often in their own room. But the rest of this video is about the other thing that will strike you if you see, if you visit a convent or uh, 
look at uh, a nun's prayer timetable is in addition to the Eucharist and at any time for, for personal prayer a nun might have in her day, there are all these different services throughout the day at, at set times. I've got an example here actually because this is when I, I stayed at a convent once and they wrote out what was happening. Um, it happened to be Christmas Day but it'd be very common like, at any convent you went to to see like a list of this is happening at this time, this service is at this time, this service is at this time and usually those services will be at the same time every day of the week as well. Um, so, so those services uh, are called the office, the daily office or uh, the divine office and it's called, like office sounds like a workplace but it comes from the same root of the word. The idea is that praying is our Christian work and that uh, praising God is our duty or and our joy. Uh, and the the idea of praying at set times in the day stems from how Jews would pray. Um, that in the Old Testament, you see God asking his people to pray at sunrise and sunset. And then you see in one of the Psalms, it talks about seven times a day I praise you. And that there seems to be in the Bible, you see Jews praying at, at set times of day. And then when you, some of the passages in Acts suggest that the early Christians would meet together to pray at set times of the day. So that's the background to this, this form of praying at, at certain hours. And um, the names of these services throughout the day are in Latin because th this form of praying has been used for, for so many centuries by monks and nuns and and centuries ago, like Latin, what was the main language of the church. Uh, and some of the services names come from the old way of telling the time, as it were, where you talk about it's, it's been three hours since sunrise and six hours since sunrise and nine hours since sunrise. So that explains some of the names. And each of these services is really only about 15 or 20 minutes long on average. And they usually have like contain obviously set prayers and then a few psalms from the bible maybe a short hymn and then maybe a song that's found within the bible and usually one or two bible readings as well like really short ones uh yeah so that, that explains kind of what's going on inside these these little services and with the help of a clock i'll just give you an idea of what the a nun's kind of prayer timetable throughout the day might look like. There might be matins quite early in the morning. Then there might be some space for the nuns to have some personal prayer in their rooms before lords. Then after breakfast, before uh, the nuns start work on whatever their, their jobs or their tasks are that day, there'd be terse. Then just before lunch, there might be sext or midday prayers. Then there might be known after lunch. And by the way, most convents that I've visited, lunch has been like the main, like the main cooked meal of the day. Then there would be evening prayer or vespers around four or five in the evening. Compline, which kind of means completion, is would be like the last service of the day. And in some communities it might be like nearer nine o'clock at night or something. But most convents I've been to, it's been shortly after supper, which might be about six, six thirty and so it might be like 7 30 in the evening every community is different so they'll have every community will have their own times so that they have these services and some communities might simplify it especially ones where the, the nuns are a lot more active and leaving the convent for parts of the day because they just they can't pray at all those times um so some convents might have um 
they might not have, for example, sex and known, they might just have midday prayers before lunch. Uh, if you go, most convent websites will have a, a page on their website where you can see what their particular timetable is. And if you go and stay at a convent, like in their guest house, if they've got one, um, you'll quite often see it pinned either in your room or pinned on the wall. You'll see that someone's written for you all the service times so that if you wanted to join join in the sisters at these services, you'd often be welcome to.